Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Musicus. Yo, Two students sitting on the desk surfaces of seats in the middle of the room called out to me. There was still time before class started so there weren't many other students. Evening. I pretended I didn't hear that horrible title he gave me as I casually walked past them to my seat to put my stuff down. But they weren't about to leave me alone. They came up to my seat as if, if trapping me in conversation. Are you okay? Why are you doing that? The blonde haired girl snarling playfully at me was Mirai. Mi Mirai Sato. The big buff guy laughing with his arms crossed was Ryu Ryuchi uh, Ryuichi Murata. They were both my classmates. Thanks, but it's really nothing worth fussing over. Sato-san hung her shoulders. She was the same age as me and always had a proper school uniform on. The eldest daughter of a big family she took care of the household duties for her busy parents for a whole year before realizing she wanted a normal student life. She looked flashy but knew how to take care of people, being a big sister to so many Siblings. One flaw she had though was her tendency to get angry or excited over the littlest things. Sociable and cool, with an earring that swayed when he laughed, everyone in class called him Ryu-san from his first name. I think he had just turned 21. Yep, definitely college. His arms weren't enormous, but obviously toned through labor, and you could see part of a tattoo just beneath his sleeve. It was no mystery he was popular with girls with his chiseled face and physique and, of course, his bright personality. However, he was actually married and recently became a father. Hmm, yes, this is college. He was an infamously wild ruffian in his hometown and didn't bother going to high school or working. But he soon got his girl pregnant and married her. Perhaps it was a blessing in disguise. It totally changed him and he started working at his father-in-law's construction firm, who then encouraged him to enroll in this part-time school. It was clear he had never actually studied before coming here and his tests were always either average or below passing. I could tell by his reactions that his score was when he, we got our test back. Well, uh, I wouldn't exactly say that. Ozaki-san always went overboard with the compliments, to the point where it seemed like I had an inflated ego. I awkwardly denied it, but Ryu-san jumped in. That's right. Before I could cop up an answer, Sato-san started. そうは見えないけど、自分は私たちみたいなのと同じ学校に通うような人間じゃないって内心で思ってるんじゃないいくら学校クビになったからってさあの学校に入れたんならここよりもっといいとこ行けたはずなのにどうしてここに来たのやらしかし、at the very least, they didn't connect the dots at the Shusaku Tsushima on TV with my dad. Well, they had their suspicions given it's a rare name, I just played the fool when it came up and somehow they all bought it. I don't think that at all. I slumped in my chair. That's 
教えてくれなかったから拗ねてるんだよこうぐちぐち言われたくなければ今度からすぐに報告するんだなフリユさんクラクトスビッグスマイルそんなんじゃないけどでもおめでとうね見つけた時は本当にびっくりしたわサロさん、ヒーブディビッグサイアトシスポーク。Thanks。Gave a little smile back. It's not like I was hiding it for some weird reason. It was just hard to say. The girl who won wasn't in lower grade at my last school. I figured I'd just get it off my chest. They were just happy for me, and I was starting to feel stupid for being upset. へぇ、じゃあそれでチラシ感じてたわけだ。She ate that right up. Yeah. He slapped me on the shoulder. Shut up. If you're gonna tease me like that, I won't return your thing, and I even fixed it. Yeah, it's working. Of course, a request like that would come from you. I looked online and it's a common problem. It was easy to fix, but I don't think I'm gonna fix all your stuff from now on. I reached into my bag as I spoke and pulled out her game system, then gave it to her. She pranced up and down in glee. Sheesh, you're clearly sorry about teasing me. Oh, Ryu san here. I then poured out an envelope for Ryu san. Thank you. You couldn't do that yourself? He snickered and scratched his head, a little embarrassed. She felt like she needed to stand up for me. Uh, okay. He seemed generally ap uh, apologetic, but on the other hand, Taro-san just poked fun as usual. Oh, come on now. Try to subdue her anger. You don't have to get mad like that. It took a second to get the tickets and as for the game, well, it definitely wasn't my forte, but I learned something new researching about it. It was a good break from the norm. I mean, it kind of hurts hearing that from you. I had no idea she was actually apologizing or not. With her hands together in front of her face, I just sighed reluctantly. As we continued our chat, the rest of the students filed in one by one. Ma Maida san, who was a single mother, always exhausted, a chubby guy, Takahashi kun. We had enough of the bullying at his last school, Ryuka-chan, who detests studying. They, all had, they had all heard from Sato-san and talked to me accordingly. The class size had shrunk so much, I was basically friends with everyone. The whole hierarchy and clique culture of normal school was absent here. Sato-san was a total chick, but chatted with the mellow, nerdy Takahashi-kun about the latest manga like it was nothing. I love that about this class. I think it's a big reason I was able to deal with quitting my last one and continue coming here. Only a split second before the start of the class, the last student, uh, Kaneda, finally showed up. Oh, 
even in this school, what was easy on dress code, he stood out. Hmm, I wonder why. Hmm, I, I can't possibly think of a reason why. The sides of his head were shaved clean for his huge mohawk. His body and clothes had metal hanging all over. His thin body had tattoos on an almost tribal level. His angular features were accentuated by a mean stare, which is sharp and beady eyes added to. He was not a guy you forgot easily. I mean, yep. It always came a second or two before class started or during, and I had never seen him once at extracurricular stuff. Also absent a ton. Despite this tight-knit class, he never opened up to anyone. Even if you talked to him, he just glared back with his beady eyes. During breaks, he went off somewhere alone and always reeked up smoke when he came back. But Ryu sounds that he never sees him at the smoking area. He talks to no one, so he's a mystery to all of us. With obviously no intention of pinning it. He does little in class and has poor grades. We thought he would drop out almost immediately, but it bewildered everyone who he was even still here. I gathered he must have had some unseen objective. Pineda entered class without making any eye contact and sat in his usual spot in the very back. Our primary teacher then came in. Being the first day back after the weekend, there were a lot of absences. This was everyone, minus the six that were absent. A total of 14. Last year, there were 20. Apparently, I batted one head when I transferred, which meant a total of seven had quit since the start of the course. It wasn't unique. This was a pretty standard drop out right here. It was unpredictable too. Some people who were gung-ho suddenly stopped coming, ho uh, stopped coming. And on the other hand, some dropouts didn't come as even a slight surprise. I wondered where they went after they quit. Those students who came here as a sort of last resort. And being in this room meant for a class of 30 or more felt a little empty. Some time ago, there were three classes open for new first year students. But after so many dropouts, it was just this single class for our year. Wow. Even adding up all the students here for all four years, it was only about as much as there were in this class. New entrants were falling each year, and the part-time course itself was in danger. It seemed to be a nationwide phenomenon, too. With more or less the same responsibility, people were switching to online education, and the part-time program's popularity was waning. And then, with more than half the seats empty, our class began. This is really more like a novel than, than a visual novel. <laughs> Pretty much it's like a picture book, literally. Reading a lot and just a static image. <laughs> After first period, it was our dinner break. By the time next period started, it was pitch dark outside and the school grounds were silent. Our teacher's lecture from the podium served as a few students lullaby. Honestly, I also had trouble focusing. I studied on my own basically all of what we reviewed here. As my grandfather desired for his son, my father fully intended to make me a doctor as well. Hmm, and a cheater? But I had been educated for that purpose and was well aware of the goal myself. After I quit my last school though, I thought I had burnt that bridge. But with no clear goal, I resumed my studies. It wasn't as though I disliked studying, and I knew it would put my family at ease if I started again, and so I used as much time as I could to study. I know studying alone is inefficient, but even still, I had gotten my practice exam scores back to the same level as before I quit. Since the reality of getting into college had become apparent, my family started suggesting I get a tutor in 10 cram school. I'm confused. Is there really a part-time high school there? This has, this definitely is not a thing. It's probably in this universe, in this game's universe. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure. No one, no one over a certain age is allowed to go back to high school to get their diploma. No one. I'm pretty sure there's an age limit. There has to be. That's why the GED is a thing. I don't even know what that stands for because I have a high school diploma. <laughs> and I, I, I've never heard of a part-time high school. Also, my uncle who also seems to drop by constantly says I quit my current school. Oh. He was my dad's younger brother, and while not a doctor himself, he managed a company that dispatched tutors. He was the most aggressive in his encouragement of me returning to full-time status. Wow, thanks, uncle. 
Like what he said, he gave me an exceptional tutor, and he was almost annoyingly persistent. And truthfully, if I thought only about my education, I should take him up on the offer. Even if I didn't go to school, I could still get into a university with the right certifications. If I used my time on more valuable education, it wouldn't be impossible to get into my original first choice college. But a part of me refused to submit. It was true. I felt a connection to this class now, but that wasn't all. I mean, school itself was a transient phase, and there was no need to keep it up if you were foregoing other potentially better options. But even that wasn't the real reason. Did I want to just go back to my previous life as if nothing had happened? I had really committed to that goal and studied my brains out. Now that it was almost within reach, why was I hesitating? Into the school, straight up, met such different people and came to know such a different world. And it slowly hit me that there was so much I didn't know about our world. So I sh should I go, you know, go back? Back to studying to, a doc to be a doctor? Is that my purpose as K Tsushima? My purpose in life? I mean, what the hell is life anyway? 42. It's embarrassing to bring it up with people, but this is the state of my mind right now. The way I toiled over that short novel and how it actually garnered a result might be relevant. When I was writing, I felt something was leading me, and I'm still on the fence whether I should be pleased with my work or not. Either way, if I tried to open up with the, uh, about these thoughts to someone, they would just say to go study and get into college. Obviously, my relatives would proclaim as such, but even these people in my class would likely say the same. But I knew I couldn't swallow that answer. Okay, ba back to the whole thing with the uh, the, the, the part-time and, and the 32-year-old dude or whatever in the school, like he said before, the last episode. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they won't let anyone that's... There, there's an age limit because, uh, yeah, you know, no no one... Honestly, no one... Uh, no one's gonna allow a, a really... Oh, no, old, old guy. Or, no, no. An older dude who's in his 30s, you know, be in a high school with uh, minors. Pretty sure. I am pretty sure. You know, because, you know, that, that, that that's a big red flag. Anyways, let's continue. Hmm. Sometimes, Sado-san just jumped up in this dead class and shouted, I want to be in class on the edge of the world. He had a real palpable regret about dropping out from the typical student route and that's how it materialized. There's no such thing as a non-typical student route in high school. When I heard her say that, I didn't really know, but I had an epiphany. I think I might have been curious as to what the edge of the world really meant. Well, the edge of the world has no edge because it's round. But who am I to say? Because, I mean, if I walk straight, Will I, will I fall off the edge? Who knows? <laughs> I couldn't focus on class and glanced over at Ozaki-san sawing logs next to me. A thin strip of drool was about to drip from her parted lips. We'd been at work all day and we had all just come back from dinner. She couldn't help it. I would have gladly let her rest, but I knew how much she wanted to keep up with the material. I tapped her firmly and her shoulder shot up. She then looked at the drop of drool that fell on her notebook. She murmured as she awoke, then quickly covered her mouth with her hand. She nodded to me while mouthing the words I nodded in understanding, then looked back to the blackboard. Extracurricular stuff was usually held after class. But there were so few students, we didn't have actual clubs, but rather rotating set up two different activities each day, and we could choose which one to join. The people didn't join because of work or buses or trains they needed to catch, but I also always tried to. So I would usually end up being at school until 10 p.m. Okay. Today, though, the teachers had some kind of meeting, so there were no activities planned, making my return a little earlier today. Which meant that everyone was leaving school at the same time. Sato-san, Ozaki-san, and I walked abreast along the street to the train station. It was a residential street off the main highway, lit up only by the occasional passing car. 
The nights were still chilly in April and I burned up my jacket. Ozaki-san's light coat was also zipped to the top. Sato-san had a long sweater on over her uniform and only her fingers emerged from the cuffs. She squinted at the approaching car as she spoke. Don't you think it's a little too soon to be thinking about graduation? She snickered at my remark. Have you had something specific in mind? I posed a question. Tokunite I am pretty sure everyone who's who's listening when you're well, when you're in middle school or if you're in middle school um, I'm pretty sure no one has ever thought about what you know college I'm pretty sure no one has thought about college until probably sophomore year or junior year of high school I'm pretty sure 95% Ozaki-san giggled at Sato-san's irritated sigh. What are you going to do, Ozaki-san? Keep working at the supermarket? Is it a $10 bulk? That might be better. I think you're capable of a lot more. Why are the cicadas so loud? Cicadas, why are you loud? She smiled shyly as she looked down. Me? When I graduate, huh? Neither of those would be very easy to become. I slumped my shoulders. Sarasan looked directly into my eyes. I think I'll go to college. That's what I've been trying for, and I need to get into my first choice school. I've been studying hard to get into college, but to be honest, I've started to entertain other venues. I've given up on going to college. Oh, these are actually actual choices. I was like, why is it orange? I've been studying hard to get into college, but to be honest, I've started to entertain other avenues. I mean, if you, if you, go, you know, go to college. I would say go to college. Yep, I mean, if you're in high school, you're, you you know, pretty much, uh, yeah, I want to go to college. And I'm, I'm pretty sure not, like, not a lot of people are just be like, um, no, let's just not go to college at all. Like, yeah, everyone in high school, yeah, that's, I remember definitely that's what happened. Uh, or, I mean, uh, yeah, usually people go to college or they take a break to think about, you know, what to do. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like this. But most, most, mostly everyone is like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to college. Or aim for that. For people, you know, who have aspirations and, you know, motivations and stuff to study for. Yeah, I'm, yeah, this, this is my thing too. When I went to high school. Sorry, I'm just giving my own, uh, my own backstory. I think I'll go to college. That's what I've been trying for and I need to get into my first choice school. 
went ahead and said it. And you saying anything else was unforgivable. I had already invested the time and my grades were improving. I had more or less regained trust after quitting my last school. I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure you are not allowed to quit high school. I mean, you, you can drop out. I mean, it's your choice, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know about you know, quitting school and then go to the different one. And uh, anyway, sorry, I'm it's just, I'm, I'm just really caught up on this one thing of the part-time high school thing. I just wouldn't be acceptable to abandon that and do something different, regardless of what I thought. Yeah, my first choice, community college. You nodded confidently. She turned her head and put her finger to her lips. まあ、とにかくうちの前日生と同じかもっと頭いい学校だったよね。ああ、結局元の場所に戻るってことなんだろうね。住む世界が違うんだ。あ、もしお医者さんになったら料金安くしてよね。Oh, you better have insurance then. Can't make any promises about something so far off, and I don't think doctors just get to decide medical costs like that. Out of sound, the shoulders drooped sadly in my response. He then sighed. The future. A concept I often think about. I gave them my answer, but it was far too complex a question for a simple answer. I knew my family would be relieved if I went back to my old course, and it wasn't like I absolutely hated the idea. It would be good in its own way. That's true. Is it, wait, so is, is the brown, the, the, I'm not the brown, the, the sapia, the sapia, the, the right word term, sapia um, uh, image, is that a uh, flashback, I'm assuming? When I decided to quit, I went to tell my grandfather, as well as apologize. Unlike my dad, he was a stern, strict person. In place of my dad, who would mostly just joke, he would give me pertinent advice. He always cared for me, reading me books when I was little, tutoring me. He always told me I resembled him, and I knew he had high expectations of me. Oh, that's great. When you when you know someone has high expectations of you, that's going to screw with your head. He was the happiest of all when I got into high school. Has, has, has anyone not gotten into high school before? Is that a thing? I don't think that's ever a thing. Is that a thing? I've never heard of this thing. Is this a thing? I don't know. People let me know in the comments. It was so hard for me to say I was quitting on my own, dashing his, ho his hopes for me. I couldn't look him in the eye. Ed inclined, I told him everything. I'd supposedly done things I had actually done. He was the only one I confided in. I never confirmed or denied anything to anyone else. I just thought it would sound like an excuse. I wanted to tell my mom, but I couldn't bring myself to because, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't you know, tell, tell, my, uh, tell my mom about the affair or, or anything, you know? I, was just, I don't know. I'm, I don't understand what, what 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 her mind is going through. It's very it's 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 confusing. It's crazy. Anyways, I don't know what compelled me to tell my grandfather I was attached to him since I was little, and the distance between us may have been at the perfect level. And I'm sure somewhere deep down I want to open up to someone. I want to reveal what I was truly thinking inside. I mean, there's also you know therapists. You could you know do that. It's all confidential. Most of it, 99% of it's confidential. The 1% is uh, uh, if you choose, if, you, if you're going to hurt someone uh, or hurt yourself or uh, any, any, any harm to someone that you, 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 you know, that you did or have done uh, or, or illegal, uh, legal resting, you know, those things. And anything illegal? Like, uh, uh, you know, doomed someone, uh, where his life is n is no more. Uh, yeah, you will, you will, that, that, that is not confidential. You will, you will be gone. You will be gone. You will be sent away to jail. Because, yeah, it's <laughs> whatever people believe, um, 
it's not all confidential. But if you, if you have done something like that and then you tell them, I'm glad you did because then you're in jail for doing that bad thing. I'm not, I'm not condoning, I'm not condoning, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the uh, not the, uh, I'm not, I'm not condoning doing the bad things. I'm just saying, okay, it's, just, it's not 100% confidential uh, because there are, there are specific, um, uh, there's specific stuff in a category where it says you you, uh, you have to report this to the police <laughs> stuff any for everyone everyone there's no HIPAA there's no HIPAA there there's literally no HIPAA there even domestic abuse and any 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 abuse the nurse pretty much is uh, required to to uh, report it and uh, if I was a nurse, I would definitely report anyone because I want to work in the pediatric unit and then any sort of abuse because I've been through abuse and it's horrible. Mm, so off you go. Bye bye to the popo. -po. Anyway, sorry, I got off topic here. I got off track. After I finished, still looking down, he spoke. I lifted my head up at the unexpected words. He sat in his usual way of leaning forward with his elbow on his knee, propping his chin up, smiling kindly at me. Oh, that was like a rhyme. I can't know if that's honestly the way he felt. He may have been trying to console me when I was feeling down. But those words hit me hard at a time when I was enduring the rest of my family's negativity. I wanted to cry. I quickly lowered my head again, not wanting to show my tears. Grandfather then continued talking. <laughs> いい機会だから自分の人生を見つめ直すといい。何かしたいことがあるなら、それにかけるのも人生だぞ。Yes, yep, yep, definitely re-examine my life after middle school. Yes, thank you, Mr. Doctor. Those words left their mark on me. If there is something you want to do. I had mowed over those words a great deal since then, on the train, during a bath over after dinner, before bed, and so on, but I couldn't find any follow-up. Well, let's, uh, let's see, you, you just finished middle school, apparently. Uh, 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 you don't know anything. You, you're what? Um, 14? Four, 14? 15? 15 maybe? 14 or 15? You, you don't know anything. Holy moly. Recently, anxiety had been running amok inside me. Huh? Like if I stay in one place, I get the urge to just break into a run. Okay. I thought the answer looked within that feeling, but I didn't know. So I had kind of started to give up. In... After, after middle school? If it was something I couldn't find or couldn't understand after serious consideration, maybe it wasn't important to me after all. Maybe it was better to focus on my present actions. I knew that, but why couldn't I fully accept it? It was as though there was a storm in my mind, not allowing me to. I was deep in thought, and I noticed Ozaki-san and Sado-san gleefully continued chatting. Oh, the, are, we, are we still in the same spot? The residential area dotted with trees and brush had slowly morphed into the bright train station environment of karaoke and pachinko. A group of drunk office workers standing in a circle, laughing uproariously with their red faces. We passed by the side of the group. Sato-san was asking Ozaki-san about her work and then ranted about Ozaki-san's boss as if it were her own. Ozaki-san tried to clarify that he wasn't really that bad. I watched them walking and talking in front of me. We were about to pass by a couple of college-age boys who were looking intently at us. My eyes met theirs and they quickly turned away. My two friends were too busy talking to notice. If I hadn't been there, they might have been approached. We came up to a convenience store, and Sato-san said she wanted to buy some goods from an anime she liked. I waited while she and Ozaki-san entered. I pulled out my phone to check if I had my, any mail, and also saw that the used book I bought online hasn't been sent yet. Then put my phone away. I peered into the store's window and saw my two friends laughing in front of the magazine rack. I knew they had tough work and home situations, but they just looked like normal youths now. It was soothing seeing them laughing. They would probably be a while. Thinking about it, I just had to hop on the train station. Train home, sorry. So I didn't need to wait around. 
But as I sat there spacing out, I felt like it would be weird to just leave. I looked upward and saw that beyond the telephone wire sprawling like a spider web all around was a pitch black sky with no moon or stars. I sighed heavily, but it wasn't cold enough that I could see my breath. I then heard laughter yet again. That group from before was getting riled up again. I didn't need to concern myself anymore. I wondered if I would grow older and be an office worker like that. Was that possible or was that a completely different path? Thinking about, thinking even harder, I actually never imagined I'd be here not a long ago. If I had stayed on track, I would have already graduated and be starting college soon. When I was in elementary school, I knew that I knew what age I would graduate high school and what age I would start working, but now that was all out the window. It's not as though I regretted it, but my past and present selves resided in different worlds. I was like a shadow that had wandered into an alley. Reflecting on all that, I saw someone I recognized exit the video rental store next to the convenience store. Examining the characteristics and face, I immediately recognized the person as Kamnita. He always left earlier than everyone else, and I suppose he had come straight here. He had a plastic bag from the store tucked under his arm. He didn't seem to notice me as he reached for a cigarette from his pocket and stuck it in his mouth. He was my classmate, but we hadn't spoken more than a word or two to each other. I was at a loss whether to say hi or not, he then lit his cigarette and took out the DVD from the plastic bag. I couldn't believe it, my goodness. Scantily clad women were all over the package. An adult DVD. Oh, <gasps> what that? It wasn't a rental, but a purchase. It was used and had a price sticker for 150 yen on it. I don't know how much that is. He held the case in both hands, intently scanning the women on it. Hmm, let's see. Uh, adult DVD, let's see. Hmm, what age can you buy it? Uh, adult stores, I'm pretty sure, they don't let anyone under 18. Oh, hmm, huh, so... Hmm, let's, 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 uh, evaluate this for a second. Let's see. Hmm, huh. Hmm. So, that would mean... <gasps> it has to be a, it, this has to be a college course. Anyways, sorry. His face was expressionless. It was impossible to tell whether he was pleased or displeased with his purchase. He also paid no mind to the passerby, who turned back to look at him in disbelief. Well, I mean, if he, if he bought something else, if he bought like a, a, a flashlight, yes, the flashlight, you know, where, where, you know, light, yeah, the flashlight, that, that, that'd be a worrying look. That, is that, is that me or is that the game? Because I'm hearing some weird, weird noises around. I, I keep thinking it's, 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 it's out in the real world. It was probably best not to get his attention. Just as I had decided not to say hi, I started moving away. He then looked up toward me, and we made eye contact. He said nothing, looking at him with that stoic face. I saw the picture on the DVD more clearly. I was at a loss for what to do. Uh, hey. I forced a small smile and managed a weak greeting, but he didn't answer. He just looked at me quizzically. It was a weird silence with just, just looking at one another. I, uh... Ah, uh... Connie spoke just as I started to. I think it was the first time I had actually heard him utter a sentence. He when someone says that to you, then you'd be more worried about the girls. <laughs> the lit cigarette out of his mouth and puffed a cloud of smoke at me. I waved my hand to dissipate the terrible smell. What, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he didn't respond, but I just snorted and kept his stony gaze on me. How rude he was. I glared at him and he squinted harder. I heard a voice behind me. I turned around and saw that Sarasan and Zaki san had finished shopping. <laughs> Azaki-san noticed Kanita and began to speak. Just then Kanita, Kanita hurriedly put the DVD back in the plastic bag. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Is, is it in a, a, a clear plastic bag? He blushed red and scurried off in the other direction. Azaki-san inquired with a suspicious look. Who knows? He, he's, 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 
scantily clad women apparently just in that whatever outfit. I don't know. It's it really weird. Anyways, I'm going to end the episode here, everybody, for Music Hus. This is literally just a novel. I'm just reading and I guess it's a choose your own adventure as well because literally I was just, um, yeah, so I think I guess in these in this series itself, I think I'm just gonna be reading more or less and just kind of go through it, kind of just read and maybe give a little bit of my thoughts, you know, on the way, but mostly just reading a lot of the the story and you know go on with it, um, less so than a visual novel, but more so of a storybook kind of thing. And I would you know stop giving my my opinions on on the whole part-time high school thing because that 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 kept, that's bothering me a lot so i'll stop doing that but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of musicus if you guys didn't please smash that like button subscribe down below for more awesome videos don't forget to ring that little bell to get notifications of my uploads thank you everybody for watching this episode and you guys will hear me in the next video goodbye